to Flash Off the Dice. I'm James, and in this episode I'm going to be looking at Warhammer Underworld's Shadesfire and Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault in the context of what is the difference between the two. So if you already own Shadespire, I'll be looking at the differences that have been introduced into Night Vault, and if you are thinking about getting into Warhammer Underworlds, then after we've looked at the differences, I'll be talking you through which version should you get. Okay, so let's see how they get on. First of all, we're going to look at the boards. So, the Shadespire boards, we're all familiar with them. They've got the hexagonal grid with the deployment spaces marked on them for the fighters. On Night Vault, we now have the red lethal hexes. So, if a, if a fighter goes onto there, unless they've got a special ability that says otherwise, they will take a wound. Now, that's not necessarily a brand new introduction for Night Vault, because when Shadespire was on its own, they did pre uh, release a single board with the lethal hex rules in it, as far as I understand. So it's not necessarily new to Night Vault, but they are now included. The lethal hexes are now included in the Night Vault boards. So that's the first difference. Dice. The dice you get in Night Vault, the attack dice and the defense dice, are exactly the same as the ones you get in Shadespire. So they've got the critical success symbols, they've got the cross swords, they've got the hammers, uh, they've got the single support, they've got the double support in equal amounts to the dice you get in Chase by. They're exactly the same. What has changed is how you do a roll off. So in Shade Spire, it was simply a case of who got the most critical successes in a roll off would win the roll off. And if for whatever reason you were tied, at the end of a roll-off, you had to roll them again. Now I'm guessing that Games Workshop got a bit of feedback saying we're sick to death of doing all these roll-offs. So what they've done now is introduce a hierarchy for the symbols. So first of all, if you are tied for critical success symbols on the dice, you then look to see who has got the most single success icons. If you are still tied, you then look to see who has got the most double success icons. And whoever has the most double success icons wins the roll off. So in that order. So critical successes, then single, su uh, single supports, double supports. And then if you are still tied, then you do under the roll off. So it simply reduces the number of re rolls you have to do for the roll offs. Now, as I'm sure most people are aware by now, one of the major changes, probably the single significant major change in Night Vault, is the addition of magic. So you get these nice pale blue magic dice. And on the magic dice you've got critical success symbols, you've got the channeling symbols, the lightning bolts, and you've got the focusing symbols, the swirlies. Okay? And depending on what spell you are trying to cast, and who you're trying to cast it with will dictate how many dice you roll and which symbols you have to come up with. If you roll two critical success symbols, then whoever is casting the spell takes a point of damage um, because they're ch trying to channel that much magical energy that it fries a little bit of their brain, I suppose. That's the, the logic behind it anyway. Um, so yeah, there's new rules around spells. Now there's different types of spells so the Stormcast Eternal faction that you get with Night Vault, uh, their leader, Avron Stormsire, can cast a spell as an attack. So he casts a big flaming ball of fulminating fire at his enemies. Uh, so that is an attack spell. The other Stormcast Eternals, they have got a different type of spell that they can cast as an action, um, which is called Empower and that if they successfully cast it then for the rest of the turn they can re-roll one attack die. And it's also worth noting that the Stormcast Eternal faction need to cast spells in order to become inspired. On the subject of spells, in Night Vault they can also be used as power cards during the power phase after an activation. So in Shadespire during the power phase you could play power cards that were either upgrades as indicated by this little cog or as indicated by the dagger. So you had upgrades 
and ploys. In Night Vault you still have upgrades, you still have ploys, but you also have spells as indicated by this little pie chart. So, Shadespire, upgrades and ploys, Night Vault, upgrades and gambits, and within gambits, ploys and spells. Now, just like the character specific spells we looked at just now, the number of dice you roll is determined by the spell caster, so some characters will roll two dice, some will roll one die, and the number of successes, or the type of success, is determined by the spell you're trying to cast. So, this empathic conduction spell requires the caster to roll at least one of the focus symbols, and that will successfully cast that spell. So, just used as a power card, like you would use a power card in Shadespire. On the subject of cards, the original warbands from the Shadespire core set, so the Blood Reavers and the Stormcast Eternals, have now both been released with the Night Vault logo on them. And you may or may not know that those individual faction expansions have got some new cards in them. Now, a question that I'm seeing a lot on the internet is, what's the difference? And essentially, not a lot. So, all of the faction-specific cards you get in Shadespire, the Shadespire core set for the Stormcast Eternals and the Blood Reavers, are fully compatible with Night Vault. The difference is, if you buy them as the new Night Vault expansions of those warbands, you get a couple of the extra universal cards. You still get all of the original cards you've got for the Shadespire core set warbands, but you also get a few extra um, universal cards that can be used with, with any warband. That is the only difference. You can use the original warbands from Shadespire fully compatible with Night Vault without having to buy the new cards. That said, it is worth checking out the FAQ on the Games Workshop website because some of the other Shadespire warbands like the Skaven and the Undead Faction, the Sepulchral Guards, they do have some changes to their faction specific cards which puts me in mind of Mantic unfortunately. So it is if you do have those warbands and you're thinking of using them in Night Vault it's probably worth checking out what the differences are, what the changes are in the FAQ on the Games Workshop website. But just to clarify and confirm, Shadespire, the warbands in Shadespire, as they come in the core set, are fully compatible with Night Vault. Finally, a few differences in the tokens that you get. So in Shadespire, you got this Cataphrane's Artifact token, and that comes under the different ways to play in Shadespire. So one of the modifications to the basic rules is you could use the Cataphrane's Artifact token as an extra objective token which goes in the centre of the board and whoever has a fighter on it at the end of the turn gets three extra glory points and the fighter that is on there becomes inspired if they are not already inspired. That is not in Night Vault, they've taken it out for some reason, I don't know why, it's a nice little quirk, and for the sake of a few lines of text and an extra token, they could probably have kept it in. But in Night Vault you get these extra tokens instead, so these are both to do with spells that come uh, in, the, in the card set. So this token is used for Chain Lightning, the Chain Lightning spell, and the Chain Lightning spell scatters across the different hexes and you roll a die and the symbol tells you which facet of the hex the, the spell scatters to. Uh, this one is a chasm token and effectively turns a regular hex into a lethal hex for the remainder of the round. So slight differences in the tokens that you get with the games. So there you go, that is the differences between Shadespire and Night Vault. So if you already own Shadespire, should you get Night Vault? The answer is probably yes, because of the new magic mechanics. Uh, it's going to be the core set that is going to be used for future expansions. So on that basis, it's probably worth getting. So you get the latest up-to-date rules, you get two brand new warbands, you get the new magic dice, and yeah, you can add the new boards to your existing set, 
which makes it nice and easy to have four player games. Um, if you are coming into it afresh and you want to know should you get Shadespire or should you get Night Vault, my honest answer is if you can afford it and you can find them, get both. I bought Night Vault first and then I bought Shadespire effectively as an expansion to Night Vault rather than the other way around. So I bought Shadespire because you get two new boards or two extra boards, you get two extra wall bands and when you've got the extra boards, the extra wall bands and the extra dice and the uh, the extra objective cards you can have up to four players playing it which is great for my lo local games court we can now have a three or four player game so yeah on that basis I think if you can get both get both if you can only get hold of one then get Night Vault because it is the latest version with the latest rules and the latest war bands and is the basis for the latest expand for future expansions so for my two pennyworth worth that is my opinion. It is a good system, it's a good mechanism, it's relatively simple to pick up and get used to because it's basically a board game and it, the rules are designed like a board game. You haven't got a huge instruction manual that you have to plough through like you do with a lot of war games and skirmish games. It's board game sized rule book. So yeah, I think if you are a board gamer and you are looking to get into miniatures war games, this is a good stepping stone. If you are the other way around, you are currently into miniatures war games and you want to get into board games because a lot of your mates are into board games, then again, it's a good halfway house for that. So, yeah, if you can afford them, get both. If you've got Shadespire, get Night Vault. If you can only get one, get Night Vault. So, I hope you found that useful and hopefully interesting. And until the next time, please continue to like, like comment and subscribe. And until next time, God bless.